Every Walk in the Bush could be your introduction to a devastating period of partial paralysis, dropping blood pressure and eventual collapse. Hopefully someone is nearby. Hopefully they've called for an ambulance. They can even go into anaphylactic shock where the blood pressure drops, they can collapse and they can even die. This is one incredibly small animal, but the consequences can be enormous. In Australia, there's about 80 different species of ticks, but there's one particular species that causes problems to humans, but also our pets. That's the paralysis tick. The paralysis tick has no eyes, so it's not an active hunter. It's more of an opportunistic creature. They're just not capable of being that aggressive. In fact, they tend to sit around waiting for someone to pass by and actually make contact with them. If something big and hairy walks past while the tick is waiting, then it will latch on and then climb onto the host. Now, once they're on you, they can actually walk over the body for some time, for even a couple of hours, and they can walk up the clothing. If they can't find ready access to the skin, then they'll keep walking and eventually settle onto their head. And so if they're on their head, people think they've fallen out of the trees. Well, no. Basically, they've gone low and just walked up. Paralysis ticks are members of the arachnid family and are known as hard body ticks. They have elongated mouth parts with rows of backward-facing teeth that they, given the opportunity, will sink into your skin. In addition to latching on with their teeth, they produce a cement-style compound to lock into place for blood feeding. These vampire-like creatures are prevalent on the east coast of Australia, particularly in the Sydney region, but they're spreading around the country. Encounters with these blood-sucking parasites are relatively common, and although harmless to many humans, they're not to be taken lightly in case you're one of the unlucky ones who will succumb to their curse. The curse of the paralysis tick is far-reaching, Aside from suffering paralysis from the effects of a tick bite, the paralysis tick can also cause severe allergies to its victims, leading to anaphylactic shock. On top of this is the identification of mammalian meat allergies that are a direct result of a paralysis tick bite. This very strange um, syndrome has just recently been diagnosed where if you're bitten by a tick, you can then develop a life-threatening allergic response to eating mammalian meat, such as your beef or your lamb or even eating meat products, such as gelatin. And this is um, becoming a very important syndrome, particularly in the more tick-prone areas of northern Sydney, such as northern beaches area, where um, mammalian meat allergy is actually more common than bee stings, it's more common than peanut allergies, and it's becoming one of the most common allergies beyond, um, obviously, uh, hay fever. In extreme cases, victims avoid eating meat altogether. Marshmallows are also off the menu as they contain beef gelatin. Choosing what to eat becomes paramount. The allergy can take several hours to kick in and could be months after the tick bite. In regards to the mammalian meat allergies and the development of potential anaphylactic shock, more than 500 patients have been diagnosed with this quite bizarre condition from the Northern Beaches region of Sydney. And we see cases of people just going to have their barbecue suddenly collapsing because they've had their sausage. They've developed this mammalian meat allergy. And it's something we need to be aware of. In terms of lifestyle, the paralysis tick lives for about a year. The adult tick is the most active and this is the most dangerous stage of all. However, both the larval and nymphal stage also require a blood mill over the autumn and winter months. Spring is the time when the adults are in full swing, but it is only the female that blood feeds on the host. The males fasten onto the females and feed upon them. Once a tick is embedded, and a lot of people say that they insert the head, but they don't, what can happen is you can have localised swelling to give the appearance that the head's embedded, but it's only these small mouth parts that are embedded. It will attach and remain attached for some time, and it goes through a sort of delay period of feeding where it's very slow to feed, then suddenly goes through a rapid feeding stage after about four to five days. If you're unlucky enough to have a paralysis tick burrow into your skin and start feeding off your blood, don't try to pull it out with tweezers or your fingers. That'll only aggravate the problem, as it's likely to blow more saliva into your vein as you squeeze its body. Using an ether spray is your best bet to kill it stone dead at the site. Here we're going to demonstrate the proper way of killing a tick in place. It's important not to try to touch a tick or attempt to remove it. It can make the problem a lot worse. So here we've got a actually a dead adult female paralysis tick on a kind volunteer. And so I have an ether-based spray 
which is um, mainly used for the treatment of warts. And so what we do is put the applicator over the tick, then do just a couple of quick sprays. This will actually freeze the tick in place. It will kill the tick immediately, prevent the tick injecting more of its dangerous saliva, and then eventually the tick will fall off naturally. Allowing the tick to drop off naturally reduces the possibility of developing an allergic reaction. Reactions range from mild with some redness and irritation at the bite site to raised red painful welts about the same length as your arm, all the way to making sure you have an EpiPen on standby. From 1920 to 1940, there were actually 20 deaths from tick paralysis in humans. Most were in children, and often the ticks were in spots of the body that weren't obvious, such as the ear canal. Since 1940, we haven't seen a death basically due to modern medicine, but also the development of an anti -venine. So we haven't seen a death in humans, but in animals there's something like 20,000 pets affected every year with tick paralysis, and many hundreds die. And so it's a very important condition. For a tiny animal, the paralysis tick drums up a pretty big attitude in terms of health issues for humans and animals. If you're in a tick-prone area, always check for the presence of ticks on your skin and clothing, and consider repellents as a means of safety. It's very important that once you've come out of a tick area, no matter what means you've undertaken to avoid ticks, once you've come out of a tick prone area, it's important to take those clothes off, bag them up, and put them into a hot dryer for 20 minutes. Because a tick can be on you for two to three hours afterwards before it actually attaches. The best advice is to be aware. Ticks are common, widespread, and cause many problems. They have very few predators and are more likely to be victims to high temperatures and low humidity. I've had people ring me up and say, my child suffers anaphylactic reaction, what should I do? And unfortunately I'd say, move, get out of that area, go to an area where there are not ticks. And it's a difficult advice, but if you've got these children who could actually die from the next tick bite, it seems a logical thing to do. Ticks cause problems, they cause problems in multitude of ways. The whole community needs to be aware of them and the problems they cause. Bushwalk at your own peril, unless you take precautions. 